Hi there and uh, welcome to the next chapter in the Warbirds Replicas Focke Wolf 190 build. And this follows closely on from the last chapter, very closely because it's really a split of the, the video that was taken out in the workshop over the last two or three days. And this one was intended to be the continuation of the finishing colours on the model. But as you'll see when you watch the video, it didn't really work out as planned. But also in this video are some small build matters which I had to deal with, such as fixing more of the plastic parts onto the fuselage. And a couple of tips as well uh, with regards to covering. So hopefully you'll enjoy this chapter. Uh, let's get to it. Another little job which um, I've obviously had to do is to fix the gun blister plastic which I've used Gorilla Glue clear for um, but rather than taping it down I've used these little canopy screws there which um, are only temporarily uh, in position they will come out once the glue is dried just to hold it in place and they are really small ones these are number two by 4.7 millimeters long just to give you an idea of the size of them <clears throat> there that's the size um, I get them from model fixings there we go model fixings great company supply as the name implies, all fixings for your building needs. Uh, and these are really excellent. They're going to be the screws that I'll use to permanently mount the cockpit canopy when it goes in place. They look a bit scale, so um, they won't look out of place. The underside of the plane, the fuselage, has to have the treatment You can just see there where we slot the tailplane in, we've got to infill that with balsa. Turn that back on the top here. I'm not going to bother to go over that with the hot air gun to make it dry quicker because I haven't. As I say, I've got to do some work uh, on the tail, so I might as well do that first and get that done. I'm going to colour round the cockpit area around here. Um, I think there was like a grey colour, so I'm going to use this grey paint that I've got. Let's just see. Oh, that looks all right. So I'm just cleaning, uh, cleaning, I'm just painting this area here and round the cockpit sides here. Basically anything that's going to be seen or could be seen when you look through the canopy. So I'm painting that grey. I don't like seeing just bare wood in there. And ultimately, as I've said in previous videos, I will be creating a, a more scale-like cockpit interior but again nothing nothing hugely just to give a I don't know, the, the impression of scale really that's what I, I want to do give that the hot air 
gun treatment. So I'll let that dry now. Again, let that dry naturally rather than force dry it. But uh, it's looking all right. And that's about the right grey colour as well, which is good. I've gone out and got um, a colour for the top surface, which I think will be okay. It's uh, this colour. Just want to see what this looks like. I don't want it to be too bright. So let's just try this. Obviously it's going to need a second coat. What I'll do is I'll just blast that with a hot air gun, give it a second coat and see what that turns turns out like. Looking at this, I suppose if you're a purist, you could argue that that should be a slightly darker colour. Um, it's, I don't know, it's not too bad. Let's just get the fuselage and what I'll do with the fuselage is I will, let's just move this over a bit so I can get it onto the, the deck and also so you can see me painting it. So what I'm going to do, I'll paint this tailplane here. I haven't rubbed it down but it doesn't matter. So that's the the tail plane. Now what happens if, despite using the iron to push covering back where it's bubbled, you st it won't stick back. In other words, there's a dry area, no paint, uh, no glue underneath it. A bit like here. Well, you've really got no option other than to slit it open, open it up and put some glue on. So I'm just going to do that now. Make sure when you do this you have a sharp knife. You don't want to tear the paper. You can see now that I can get the knife underneath there. And that is where it's dry. Now, to open that up fully, You'd cut an H section, so we're going to cut down there 
and cut down there. Now what this allows me to do is to really get underneath. You've got to be a little bit careful about how you do this, but you can see here, you can really get underneath that paper. Didn't quite cut that through enough there. And peel that paper back like that, right the way along. And that's the dry bit there and under there. So all I'm going to do now is you get some PVA. Don't go over the top with this. Let's get some PVA and paint the PVA into that dry area there. there, making sure that you do the other edge of the flap as well. It's useful to have a tool to hold that bit of the flap open. So just rubbing the paintbrush down and a bit under here as well and a little bit under there. Okay, with the glue applied to that I can then just smooth that down, pressing it down like that, making sure that it doesn't wrinkle of course. It's good to give it a good a wipe over with a cloth as well. And just encourage the glue along that line there, pressing down. And there, that's it repaired. Now finally what you can do is you can use your iron on that to really make sure that's sealed. And that's another good reason why you'd wipe it down with a cloth because if you've got any PVA on top there obviously that would um, be a bit sticky on the, um, on the sole of the iron. I've decided that the paint I've put on the, the wing and fuselage, um, this colour paint here, it's too yellow. <clears throat> I want something that's a more brown or orangey colour, so that's put off the painting. So I'm just going to turn my attention now to the, the cockpit canopy. It's got moulding lines on the cockpit canopy and you can paint those moulding lines, which is absolutely fine. But what I like to try and do with a cockpit canopy is give it more of a fit, uh, more of a framing type feel. So I usually use <clears throat> this stick-on aluminium to do that, and I paint over the top of it, which then gives me the facility to rub the paint back and expose some of the aluminium underneath as though it's weathering. So I've just cut this first strip here, see what it looks like on here. That's what I'm going to do around the whole of the framework and around this rear portion here as well of the canopy. Progressing quite well with the cockpit canopy, you get the general idea. Strips cut, stuck in, and then just burnished on there. Obviously I'm going to mask up ultimately in the gaps here and then paint over the top. I'll actually 
rub them down slightly as well just to give them a key for the paint. So I've just got this rear section to do now. I'll probably cut a template out of some paper to go over that and then use, um, I'm going to have to use a couple of strips of this to go over there. But it's looking good. Right, I've cut the bit out for the back and there it is now. So I've just burnished it with this tool here and that gets rid of any creases that may form when you're bending it into complex curves and also if you do overlap them slightly you can really push it down with the burnishing tool and the joints more or less disappear. They won't totally disappear but once they've got some paint on them. So there it is, ready for the paint. Well, as you can see from this uh, video, this chapter that I've just shown, the big problem I had was the paint colour. Uh, it just wasn't satisfactory and I tried mixing it to, to get it to be better, but it still wasn't what I wanted. What I'm trying to get is more of a burnt orange or more of a, a brown tinge to that paint. It was just too yellow. I think I've um, pinpointed the one I need to use so I'm going to go out and get that and that will allow me to continue the painting of the fuselage and the wing. But I hope you enjoyed uh, this video. Uh, if you did like the video down below and subscribe if you haven't done. If you have thanks a lot and see you on the next one.